Are you thinking about building a website on high level in 2025, but you're just not sure how to go about it? Today, I'm gonna walk you through the entire high level website editor step by step. So if you're thinking about building your first site on the platform or you're struggling to build websites like a pro, this video is perfect for you. I've spent over 1000 hours building websites on GHL. So I'm going to show you how I use it, starting from the basics and then going to more advanced stuff. All right. So high level website builder tutorial 2025. By the end of this video, you'll learn how to use the website editor to build beautiful websites on high level. If you go to sites, you'll see different options right here. We have funnels, websites, the funnel and website builder are almost the same. Just a few tweaks that are different today. I'm going to focus on the website builder. So if I click this right here, you see that I have a bunch of different websites right here. If this is the first site that you're going to build, you won't have anything right here and you'll have two options to start out. You have an option to create a folder so you could organize your website such as client websites, agency websites and have different folders to organize your sites. And the other option would be to create a new website. Here you have two different options. You have the website to create one from scratch or from a template that high level gives to us. I tend to stay away from the templates. In my opinion, they look a little bit cheap, boring, corporate, and your website is gonna look essentially the same as many other high level websites that use this same template. What I like to do is start from blank. Here, what you could do is give it a name. If I was gonna build the website for a business, I would just give it the business name, so Blissful Spa. I'm gonna hit create. And then here is where you would be able to add your pages. In this case, I'm just going to add one page and I'm going to give it a name home for the path is the thing that's going to show after the domain. And I'm going to show you how to connect the domain as well. But for now, I'll just do home and then create new page right here. You can create more pages if you want, but at this point, I'm not going to do that. I am going to start building the home page and there's two options. I have the option to use existing and create from blank. I'm going to show you what use existing is towards the end of the video. But for now, since we are building from scratch, I'm going to hit create from blank right here. Here you see that there's a lot of buttons, options. And before I start building a website, I want to show you how everything's related and give you a little bit more context so you have a better idea and are set up for success. On High Level's website editor, we have different containers and these containers help us style the design, the layout of our site. The biggest containers are sections, which are green. Within sections, we have rows, which are blue. We can have one row or multiple rows on a section. Within a row, we have columns, which are purple. And again, we can have one or multiple columns inside a row. And within a column, we have elements which are purple. And we can have one element, multiple elements within a column. Back on high level, you see that the first thing that I am prompted to do is to add a section. So which is green right here. Then I would add a row and I have different options, a one column row, two column row, depending on the layout that I want to build. For right now, I'm going to build the hero section of my website. So I'm going to hit one column row. And then the first thing that I'm going to add is a headline just like this. Now let's say that I was trying to build something similar to this. This is the website that I found online. I'm going to show you how to build this very quickly, including the nav bar here at the top. Back on high level, what I'm going to do to change this is I'm going to click this right here, select all of it, and then paste or type what I wanted to add. So in this case, it's experience the art of relaxation. The next thing that I'm going to do is click this right here because I want to add a button. So I'm going to type button right here and then click this right here. And now you see that I've added a button. You'll notice that when I click on different sections and different elements, this right here changes and that's the properties for that specific element that I have clicked. So if I wanted to change the color of this button, what I can do is click on the button and then here there's some different properties such as the background color. Let's say that I wanted to change it to this color right here. That's how you'd be able to do it. At the same time, if I wanted to change the text, I'll just scroll down here and replace click to sign up for book now. And right now the font is a little bit too thin. So to change this, you'll see that there's this font weight right here. You can change it from normal to maybe bold. And now you see that it's a lot more bold, easier to read. The last thing that I'm going to do for this button is go to advanced. And here for border options, I'll make it so that it has full border. And for the border, I'll make sure that it's transparent. I don't want any other color around my button. And the border radius, I'll make it so that it's 15, so that instead of sharp corners, they'll be a little bit more friendly, just like you see right now. When you take a look at this website right here, you see that there's a lot more space here at the top. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to click the green section. And now you see that I can change the padding and the margin. You may be wondering what the difference is. So actually, before I add this, let me change the color of this. So you see exactly what I'm talking about. If I was to add padding, you see that I'd add, let's say 140. I've added spacing inside the container. However, if I was to add any sort of margin, let's say I do 100 or 80, you see that I've added space outside the container. So before the container, in this case, this is not what I want. So for the margin, I'll make sure that I set it to zero. And then for the padding, what I could do is make it so that at the bottom, I also add 140 just like this. 
let's say that I want to change the background color to a different shade. I could totally do it just like this. Or another option would be that you can also add an image or a video. So let's say that I wanted to select an image. What I can do is click this right here and then the media library will open. If you've already added your images, they will be here. But if not, you can just click upload and upload them from your computer. In my case, this is the image that I want to add for the hero section. So you see that I have it right here. You can center this image right now. I'm going to make it so that it's full center just like this so that it's placed exactly in the center of my section. Now you see that this is very hard to read. So what I could do is I could change the font. I'm going to click this right here, scroll down and then here where it says color, I could just play around with the color. Let's say that I make it so that it's white. Now it pops a bit more, but it's still kind of hard to read. So what I'm going to do is make it so that the background is black and then set the opacity so that it's, let's say, a half fade. So now you see that it's a lot easier for me to read this right here. If at any point I want to make any text bigger, what I can do is click on the actual text. And then you see that for the font size, I could manually drag it just like this to make it bigger, or I could just type a value such as let's say 60 pixels, just like this. Let's say that I wanted to add a sub headline in between the headline right here and the button. What I can do is hover over my headline and then click this right here and then type sub headline just like this, click on it. And now you see that I've added a sub headline. What I'm going to do first is change the color so that it's white. It's easy to read. And let me just go ahead and change the copy right here. If at any point I wanted to give more space between my elements, what I can do is click on that element. And as I mentioned kind of earlier, add more padding or margin. In this case, I'm going to add 20 pixels here at the bottom and then do the same for this one right here, 20 pixels here at the bottom, just so everything looks a little bit more spaced out. For now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to build a section just like this. So let's go back to high level and I'll add a new section just like this. I'm going to make it so that it has two columns, one for the image and then for the text on the other side, just like what you see on screen right now. For the left hand side, I'm going to add an image just like this. And then for the right hand side, if we take a look at this right here, we have a headline, sub headline, paragraph and a button. So I'll start with the sub headline and then a headline and then a paragraph. So you see how very easily you're able to add the different elements. And what you may notice right now is that as I hover over the elements, there's different options. So you see that there's some arrows right here. So if I was to click this arrow, I'd be able to move and shift elements around. When I click on this gear, the properties will appear, which is kind of like the same thing when I click on the actual element. And then on this side, you see the option to duplicate an element, to delete an element. And let's say that if I do duplicate it, what I can do is drag and drop and then put it there very easily. Now for the sub headline, what I'm going to do is type about us and then I want to make it so that everything is left to line kind of like what we had right here. So to do this, what I'm going to do is click on this element, make it so that it's left aligned. I could also make it to the center, right aligned, and then do the same for all of the different elements in this section, just like this. I've added some copy to this right here. Again, if you wanted to add more space, you can simply play around with the margin and pattern properties and then make sure that you add enough spacing so that everything looks nice and organized. If at any point I wanted to make it so that I change the color or the style of just one word on a headline, what you can do is select the actual word that you want to change or the actual words. In my case, it's this one's right here. So in this case, I wanted to make it so that it's italic and then change the color. Now, of course, this is hard to read. So pick a color that makes sense. What I'm going to do now is add an actual image right here. So I'll click on the element and then here I'll just select one of the images that I've already loaded such as this one right here. And the one thing that I'm noticing right now, which you may be noticing is that this is too tight right here. This other website that we saw had a lot more space. So to do this, what you can do is click on the column and then add some more spacing here on the side. So I'm going to make it so that it has 40 on this side and then 40 on the other side as well. What I recommend you do is as you're building your website, keep saving your progress in case something happens, you've saved your progress every step of the way. And if at any point you wanted to preview your website, what you can do is click this right here. And here you see the website. This is what we've built so far. And this is just a preview. So if we go back here, you'll see that there's two buttons. There's the save and the publish. Right now, if I was to hit publish, I don't have a domain and I'm going to show you how to connect the domain later in the video. But for now, what I'm going to do is show you how to build this nav bar that you see right here. You see that we have a logo, so menu items and a button just like this. To do this, what I'm going to do is add a new section 
action just like this and then make it so that it has two columns and of course i want to make it so that this will be at the top so what i would do is make it so that i click this arrow right here now that element is at the top and then here i'll add a nav bar and then on this side i would add a button i'm not going to create it from scratch so if you remember what i just showed you earlier you can duplicate it button and then move it to that specific section on a page now i'm going to click this right here drag and drop it just like this so that it's more kind of like what we saw on the other website click on this nav bar go down here and then add the image right here my logo is this one and right now it looks kind of funny so if this happens on your website what i recommend you do is just completely get rid of the height it's going to mess it up in mobile as well and just adjust the width so in this case this is too small so let's make it so that it was let's say 200 i don't want to have this so i'm just going to delete it i don't need the business name what you can do as well is here where it says business name untoggle this and now i have my nav bar you see that i have home up about and contact if i wanted to change this what i can do is click on the navigation bar and then here on the menu items i can just click the three dots right here and then change it so let's say from about i would like to make it so that it's services and then i can hit submit and then you see how i was able to change this very easily you see that when i hover over services i have this team sub menu if i wanted to make it so that i don't have that i can just delete it here and hit delete or if i want to make it so that this would be its own page i can just drag and drop it and kind of pull it out you see kind of like now it's its own thing and if i wanted to bring it back in i can hold it and then kind of bring it on top just like this the one thing that i don't like is that when i click on an actual menu item there's like a black box so to fix this you see that here at the bottom there's like different properties i'm going to make it so that when i hover there's no color around it but when i do hover over that menu item i want to make it so the color would be this right here so now you see that that looks a lot more clean than what we had before let me go ahead and preview this to show you what we have right now of course if i was to click this right here it wouldn't work so let me just show you how you can very easily connect these buttons right here to do this i need to first create a new page in this case we only have the home page i've saved and i'm going to take a step back right here and then what you can do is add a new page so in this case let's say i do the services page and I'm going to hit create new page. In this case, what I could do is create from blank and just do what I've just showed you. But since we've already spent some time creating this homepage right here, what I would do instead is click this use existing and then select this actual website. So like the actual page that I want to copy, which in this case is the home and then hit import. And very easily, I would be able to add a new page with the style, the buttons to save ourselves some time when we're building the site. I'm going to click edit right here and go to our services page. And for our services page, what I want to do is first change this to services, get rid of this sub headline and then swap this image. Let's say that I wanted to make it so that instead of an image is a video, I could totally do it just like this. And then here, select my actual video. The one thing you see, well, two things. First of all, this is kind of hard to read. And the second is that it doesn't span the entire width of my section. So to change this, you can play around with these different properties. The one that I found works the best is cover just like this. And then right now the video doesn't play we would need to save this and preview it to see it live and in the same manner that i showed you earlier you can play around with the opacity so in this case let's say that i do light fade that would make it so that this text is a little bit easier to read let me go ahead and preview this to show you what this looks like now so this is what the website looks like live you see that this video looks very cool this section is very interactive right now we're in the services page and if you wanted to change between pages without having to go back what you can do is click this right here or you can also do it by selecting this page pages icon right here and then select the page that you want to go to so in this case i'm going to go back to home now that i'm back in home i want to start connecting some of these buttons so for instance in the nav bar i want to make it so that when i click for the services right here now that we've already created the services page i'm going to go ahead and select the page that is the services right here you can also make it so that you redirect to an external url let's say you had a link to your social media or somewhere external you could also just literally type the actual url right here for now, I'm going to make it so that it goes to the services page just like this. One thing that I see a lot of beginners face is that their navigation bars look different. And that's because on each page, they have a different navigation bar. So now let me show you how to make it so that you have the same nav bar in all your different pages. And if you make a change in one page, it spans across the entire website. So for now, what I'm going to do is click on my nav bar right here, but you can really do it with any section. And then you see that there's a save icon right here. There's two options right here. There's a template and a global section. For now, I'll start with a global section and I'll give it a name. So in this case, let's say I do navbar section 
and then save this right here. And now you see that this changed color. So this is still a section, but it changed from this green to this dark purple. And what I'm gonna do now is add a different color. So let's say I do this just like this. And well, first of all, let me make sure that this is transparent because it looks a little bit ugly. What I'm gonna do now is hit save and go back to the other page that we just created, the services page. Now, if I go back to the services page right here, you'll see that this in here didn't change color. This is an entirely different page with an entirely different sections so what we want to add is make sure that we add that global section so that if we change the nav bar it would also show in this page so that it's consistent so in this case what i'm going to do is delete this nav bar right here click the plus icon right here and here you see that the fourth option is global section so i'm going to click this right here and then you see that the nav bar section is here i can drag and drop it and paste it wherever i want and here you see that i've now added my nav bar in this case if i was to change the color let's say back to white it would also change it in my home page and in fact, I'm going to show you right now because this is a global section. Any changes that I make on this section will be reflected in the pages that I've added that specific section to. Now I'm going to show you section templates. So in this case, if I was to save this right here and instead of doing global section, I do template and I hit save. You see that this didn't change color and the way that this works is kind of like when we duplicate this right here we have a new section already built out if i was to go to a different page let me go back to the services right here and i'm going to delete this so you see what i mean let's say that if i was to add a section template i have different templates but the one that we just created is this last one right here the about template i'm going to drag and drop it just like this if i do make some changes here they're not going to be reflected on the home page so we have global sections and templates different ways for different cases the next option that i want to cover is the the store right here so if you're planning to turn your high level website into an e-commerce store you can just literally add to site right here so i'm actually going to do it live it's going to take some time and it's going to build out an entire e-commerce store on my website now not only do i have the two pages that i already created but i have my products list so kind of like what i see right here i have my product details page and right now these are just placeholders these are not your actual products you would have to create them on high level but very easily i've now been able to turn my website into a full e-commerce site now now, the next option that I want to show you is this pre-built section. So if I click this right here, you see that high level gives us kind of like pre-built templates for different sections on our website. So let's say that I was building a testimonial section for my site. You see that I can literally drag and drop this just like this, which makes it easy for you to save a lot of time. Although the one thing that I would say, I see a lot of websites that have very similar pre-built sections. So these are great as a starting point, and then you can really spend some time customizing it as well. The next option would be buttons. If you don't want to spend any time styling your buttons you can just click this right here and be able to drag and drop them just like this but in this case i'm going to delete this right here the next option that you have are social media icons if you want to link your socials on your website so in this case what i'm going to do is add them to my site just like this drag and drop them kind of like this you see that now i have my social media icons let's say that you want to remove linkedin because you don't have it for your business you can just delete this right here if you wanted to link your actual instagram profile what you can do is click this right here and then type the url for your profile very easily other elements here are countdown timers if you're running some sort of promotion and you've already created them on high level you can also add images and progress bars so different elements right here the next thing that i wanted to show you is how to start editing your website for mobile and to do this you can click this icon right here which is the mobile mode and here's what your website would look like on mobile what i recommend is spend some time making it so that you optimize your website for desktop and once it's done what you can do is go to the mobile mode and start playing around with it what's cool is that for instance i'm going to click on this headline right here and for different properties you see that there's this icon right here so for the font size in the desktop you see that it's 60 but if i wanted to make it so that in mobile it's a bit too big and i wanted to make it smaller i can very quickly change this right here you can do the same for the alignment for the font weight and a lot of other different properties let's say i want to make it so that everything is left aligned just like this if i go back to desktop the design here wouldn't be affected if you want to take a look at what your website looks like on mobile without having to send this link over to your phone what you can do is save preview the website right click hit inspect and then the dev tools will open here at the top you see that there's different dimensions i'm going to make it so that i click the iphone 14 pro max and now i'd be able to see what my website would look like on an iphone device let's say that i wanted to make it so that my nav bar is sticky at the top so no matter where i am on my website my visitors are able to go to a different page i'm going to go back to high level and i'm going to click on the actual section 
and on the properties right here i'll make it so that for stickiness i make it so that it's stick to top and if i check on desktop it'll be like the same thing right here i'm gonna hit save and if i preview my site again you'll see that now as i start scrolling now my nav bar stays in the top which is very very cool as well if at any point you've made a change that you don't like the easiest way to go back is just click this button right here and then you'll be able to undo your change something awesome as well is that let's say that you spend some time doing some changes but you want to go back to an earlier version of your website what you can do is click this button right here that says versions and then here you'd be able to go to an earlier version depending on what changes you've made you can just click on the actual version and then click this restore right here so basically no change that you make on your website is permanent for now i'm not going to do it i'm just going to go back just like this here at the top left you see different icons i'm going to cover some of them right now so you see that when i click layers right here you see that i have the general structure of my site let's say that i open this section right here there's a particular element that i would like to clone and maybe add to another page what i can do is let's say click this right here click the three dots hit clone and now that i've cloned that button i could very easily rearrange it here so that's also like another way to rearrange elements within your site for now i'm going to delete this right here this second button is to go to a different page which you can also do by just clicking on this right here this third button opens the tracking code so if you wanted to add like a facebook pixel anything of that nature here is where you'll be able to add it i'm going to come back to this one in just a sec but the next one that you see is the typography so there's two ways that you can change the font in your site let's say that you want to change the font for this headline right here you can click on this headline and then here where it says typography type be able to change it to a different type but the problem is that if you wanted to change it to the entire website it would be very tedious to change one by one so if at any point you want to change the typography to your entire site what you can do is click on this button right here and then you see that you have headline font and content font so all of my headlines have this font right here if i was to change this to let's say roboto you see that i've changed this font and then this one right here and it would be the same for content content so if i click this right here i can select a different font on goha level you have all of the different google fonts so you can just click this right here and then find the font that you like the next option that you see right here is the background so let's say i click this and make it so that it's blue with this property right here basically what you're doing is setting the background behind the sections to be of that color which in my case it's blue of course at any point you can select an individual section and make it so that it has its own color the next option that we have is the pop-up settings so let's say that you wanted to make it so that a visitor clicks on the book now and a pop-up appears on the screen that's where you'd be able to set this up right here so in this case it would be the same thing kind of like how we build on the website i wanted to add a one column row with a headline and then after the headline i wanted to add a calendar for my prospects to book that's where very easily i'd be able to adjust just like this it doesn't have to be a calendar it could be a form a survey but in this case i'm just adding this calendar right here and you can play around with the different pop-up settings i want to show it to my website visitors after 10 seconds and i want to make it so that it takes up the entire page just like this you can really play around with the different settings for now i'm going to hit save and now that i've created my pop-up let's say i click on this button right here i can define what happens when somebody clicks on that button so you see right now that the default option is to open the pop-up but if i wanted to make it so that it goes to a specific url or it goes to a specific page you see that very easily i would be able to change this right here for now i'm going to keep it so that it opens the pop-up i'm going to preview my website so you see that when i click the book now button the pop-up now appears and it's something that you can integrate with your high level website as well the next option that we have is the seo metadata tab this is very helpful for seo so it helps google understand what your website is about but it also is going to be the preview that a prospect sees when you send the website over let's say on whatsapp on instagram so in this case let's say that i wanted to make it so the title of my website would be this dash the name of my company for the description it would be this right here the seo helper lets me know if my page has a title if it's under 70 characters so that it doesn't truncate you can also add a social image right here so i'll click this right here i add this like this and now if i hit update seo if i was to send this website over that's the preview that my prospects or the person that i sent this website would see if you start adding html or javascript on your sites if you click this button right here you'll be able to preview what that code does live the next option is the cookie 
cookie consent banner. So if I click this right here and I toggle this just like this, I'll not be able to add a cookie consent banner, kind of like what you see down here. For now, I'm going to toggle this off. I don't need it. Now, before I show you how to connect your domain and add a Fabicon so that you can see it on the top of your browser, I'm going to show you how I take my high level websites to the next level. You see this very cool banner kind of like that rotates. As you scroll down here, you see that I have different effects, different things that I've added to make sure that this website is a lot more interactive. To do this, I added custom code and I'm going to show you how that would be on high level. So let's say that I wanted to make it so that when I hover over this image, it becomes bigger. What I need to do is add some custom code. And if you don't know, I have this stock that has all of my high level web design tutorials and code snippets for different custom effects. So it's literally what takes my high level websites to the next level. In this case, I'm going to click on the 1.1 right here, how to make images bigger when you hover over them. And I'm going to scroll down here and then I'm going to go ahead and copy this CSS code, go back to high level. And now you see that there's this custom CSS window right here and here's where I'll be able to paste code to style my website. So in this case, I'm going to do this just like this and I'm going to hit save right here. Now I need to tag that image. So what I'm going to do is click on the actual image, go to advanced and then here where it says custom class, I can add the tag. So in my case, image style one, I'm going to click enter. And right now when I hover over this image, nothing happens. I would have to go ahead and preview this to show you the effect. So if I scroll down and I hover over that image, you see that it becomes bigger. So it's kind of like a cool effect and I have a bunch of other tutorials right here that you can literally follow to take your high level website to the next level as well. Now let's say that you finish building your website and you're ready to publish. I'm going to show you how to connect your domain. For now, I'm going to go back and to add the domain, what I'm going to do, go to settings and then in settings, scroll down here to where it says domains. And then if you don't have any domains, this will be blank and I like how I have it right now. You're going to click on connect domain right here and you're going to go ahead and type your domain. In your case, it will be the actual domain that you bought in GoDaddy or in Cloudflare. So in this case, I have this test domain right here. I'm going to go ahead and click continue and then continue here again. And in my case, because I bought the domain on GoDaddy, I can just click authorize domain right here and then sign in with my password and username. Click this connect right here. High level will automatically write the DNS records on GoDaddy. So pretty much it's going to connect the domain for me. If in your case it doesn't work, just click try again. And if you give it a few seconds, it will actually work. Now that I've added my domain, it's asking me where would I like to link it? So in this case, I'm going to go to website and then link it to the actual website that we just built, which is this one. And for the default, I want to make sure that it's home right here. I'm going to click on proceed to finish. And now essentially it's linking that domain to my website. If I go back to that page that we've just built, I can click here on settings and you see that now my domain has been connected. If you had multiple domains that you wanted to swap it, you can just click this right here and be able to select a different domain. Now, the last thing that I wanted to show you is how to add the Fabicon that you see on the tab of browsers. So let's say that you wanted to add your logo. What you're going to do is go to the media library. And assuming that you've already added that image, let's say, in my case, it's this one right here. Click here, select get link and then go back to sites go to the actual website again and if i go to settings you'll go ahead and paste the image url for the fabicon url right here and then select save now that we've connected the domain we need to make sure that going forward not only do we save but we also hit publish right here now that i've added the domain to my site and i've published it if i click at this right here i'll be able to see my site in this case because i just added this domain the security certificate hasn't been issued so if this happens to you just give it like five ten minutes and then you can retry again but that's how you'll be able to publish your website once you're done if you want to take your high level websites to the next level make sure that they stand out what you can do is get a copy of a notion doc it has step-by-step -step tutorials and it's easy to follow even if you don't know any code at all so click the link in the description and get your own copy.